Hey guys, today we will begin the escapade of finding exactly how many levels can be made using Bloxels. Today, we will begin to quantify the extensive number of trials which are able to be conceived in the Bloxels universe. Today, we will challenge Matbat. I hereby challenge you to a duel, but it starts next video because we have to do some stuff first. Find the biggest level creator video game ever created. Sorry, but I'm going to have to make this a two-part series because gosh dang it, brains are complicated. Before we jump into brains, I'll introduce Bloxels because probably none of you know what the heck I'm talking about. Bloxels is this free app that lets you build your own video games using a 13-bit system. It's kind of like Mario Maker, but you can do a whole lot more stuff with it in terms of animation and visual effects. You can make your own animations, characters, backgrounds, everything can be custom made. Then you can put boards and animations into land tiles, coins, hazards, and what we are going to focus on today, enemies. Once you make an enemy and put him in this spot, you can configure him and give him a brain. In order to make brains, you have to pay extra for the game board that they sell, but it's totally worth it. You can do tons of stuff with brains, and they really change the nature of the levels. M Mattel didn't sponsor me though. They could if they wanted to. Just. Just keep it in the back of your mind. I happen to have one because of all the money I make off of YouTube. Zero profit so far. Also, it's only $20. Let's go to board. What you probably didn't know is that this video also features an Expo Marker unboxing. I will open the package before your very eyes. Hey look! It's Expo Markers. Seriously, what did you expect? Going over to YouTube, we can see that unboxings have millions of views. I would take extensive measures for that amount of views. There's nothing wrong with the video creators. These dudes are absolutely brilliant. They just go and get something off of Amazon, you know? Just open the package, look to the left, and there's a million people sitting there, anticipating their next move. He's opening a box! Back to Bloxels. With brains, you can affect the enemy's size, strength, speed, number, or type of projectiles, coins given after defeat, damage given to you, and coins or hearts taken from you. These are represented by blue, pink, orange, purple, yellow, red, and green blocks, respectively. The game board comes with 40 blocks of each color, providing us with a maximum number of blocks for each color. All these enemy traits, controlled by the enemy's brain, increase in power every time you add a block, meaning that there are 41 options yielding different results for every color, 1 to 40 blocks, or no blocks at all. However, there are two exceptions, red and pink blocks. With red, the amount of damage given only changes when there are 0, 2, 4, or 10 red blocks. I know these should be ranges like 0 to 1, 2 to 3, 4 to 9, etc., but you get the point. Pink has 11 different options, 0 to 20 blocks, evens only. Calculating the number of combinations you can make should be easy from here. There are 41 options for 5 different colors, a color with 11 and another with 4. All we have to do is multiply them all, right? No, this is a 13 minute video. I am determined. This does give us the answer we want if there is no limit to how many blocks you can have in a brain. If we have 40 blue, orange, purple, yellow, and green blocks with 20 pink blocks and 10 red blocks, the maximum for each color, we get a total of 230 blocks. As you can see, it doesn't work. Our 13 by 13 grid can only hold 169 blocks. Which is kind of the definition of a 13 by 13 grid. This means that we can only count the combinations that add up to 169 or less. There are a few different ways to look at this. What we could do is say that all the blocks are marbles, and we can look at all the different combinations where we can take out 169 or less marbles. Two pink marbles are bonded together, and when you take them out, they count as two. By the way, these are legitimate strategies I use to try to simplify the problem. We might need a bit more of an organized approach though. We could picture it like a vending machine, but this is still going to be pretty complicated without a computer and coding skills, which I unfortunately lack. Let's break it down a bit. Just for a moment, let's ignore pink and red. What if instead of saying that there are 169 spots we must fill, we say that there are 61 spots which must be taken away? If we start with the maximum amount of blocks, including 20 pink blocks and 10 red blocks so we can worry about them later, it might be easier to visualize. If we take away 61 blocks from 230, we get 169, which means that taking away 60 and under is unacceptable, and must be taken out of the number of total combinations, which is 41 to the 5th times 11 times 4, or 5,097,672,844. Let's have a row for blue, yellow, green, purple, and orange blocks, and start by taking away 0 blocks from all of them. That's 0 for all 5 colors, and one combination that works. 
We'll have a small table down here with a number of blocks, an independent variable n, and a dependent variable f of n. Let's try taking away one block. There are five spots for it to be taken from, leaving us with five combinations. Just for convenience, I'm going to add each previous combination to the new combinations to make it a little easier later, leaving us with six combinations for n equals 2. If we continue this long process, we get 21 combinations for n equals 3, 56 combinations for n equals 4, 126 for n equals 5, 252 for n equals 6, and 462 for n equals 7. We've only taken away six blocks out of 60, and already I've drawn out 400 different combinations, a little less using some tricks. 3,000 combinations. But this might not be the most efficient solution to our problem. The most efficient solution is giving up. I'm kidding. We're gonna do calculus. Well, it's actually just basic subtraction and addition, but if you really want to know what's happening, then it's calculus. Why don't we just randomly and for no apparent reason, take the difference between the first two values and write it here. Let's do the same for all the other values and put a 1 for the new row, rinse and repeat, putting a 2 next to this row instead of a 1. We are looking for a row where every value is the same and there are at least two values. Then whatever row it is in will be the degree of polynomial that can describe the trend. For example, if it ended in the third row, we would have a third degree polynomial, or ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. I'll explain how this works in a bit. Let's continue this method to make rows 3, 4, and 5. In the fifth row, both values are 1, so we can stop here. We have a fifth degree polynomial. Before we move on, I want you to know why this method is valid. In order to do this, I will explain calculus at a very simple level. It's like calculus is San Francisco, and we're flying in a plane. Calculus students are the citizens, and I'm your pilot saying, look! Things! Let's turn around. Anyways, derivatives allow us to find the slope at any point on a graph. They do this by reducing all powers of x by 1, doing some stuff to the coefficients, and plugging in a value of x to get the slope at that point. If we look back to our triangle and see n is the x value and f of n is the y value, what we're really doing is taking the difference in y values and dividing by the difference in x values. Rise over run, where run is always 1 because that's how we did it. Now it's not instantaneous slope, which is what calculus gets us, but it works out in the end. Now imagine we have a fifth degree polynomial at the top, which is what simple arithmetic says it is, and taking the derivative would create a fourth degree polynomial, leaving us at row one. Another derivative leaves the third degree polynomial at row two, second at three, first at four, and a zero degree polynomial at row five, or some constant times x to the zeroth, which is just the constant. Whatever you plug in for x, the output will be the same, which is 1. Now we know that f of n follows the pattern f of x equals ax to the 5th plus bx to the 4th plus cx cubed plus dx squared plus fx plus g. We can plug in values for x and f of x to get 6 different equations, and when we subtract the second one from the first, third from second, etc., and repeat this we can solve for a, then b, then c, and then the rest of the variables. Now we can plug those values into the original equation to get f of x equals 1 1 20th x to the 5th plus 1 12th x to the 4th plus 7 24th x cubed plus 5 twelfths x squared plus 1 5th x. I plugged in all the values we already knew and got the right answers, so our function is correct. Also, if we take away 0 through negative 3 blocks, there are 0 combinations, which is correct and legitimately impressive. It kind of falls apart when we take away negative 4 blocks with negative one combinations. No, go away, you don't get to touch that. Now, since taking away 60 or less blocks is bad, we need to calculate f of 61 to get the number of combinations that go over 169, but stay less than or equal to 230. Now we can look at the red and pink blocks. Instead of trying to integrate these with the rest of the colors immediately, let's just look at them by themselves. Oftentimes, in these types of problems, we must first understand individual parts before we can understand the whole. In the last calculations, we assumed that no red or pink blocks were taken out. Red started with 10 blocks and pink started with 20. We can take away any even number between 0 and 20 from pink, and we can take 0, 6, 8, or 10 from red. Here are all the possible ways we can take away blocks from the total, ending in a maximum of 30 blocks being taken. Now we must integrate these into the total. If we take away two red or pink blocks, we have 59 blocks left to take away, which means that 58 and under is bad, which correlates to f of 59 combinations. If we take away four, that is f of 57 combinations, and so on. If we add all these values, up, we get 105,312,009. But some of you may have noticed, what are we doing? f of 61, taking away 60 blocks? In taking away 60 blocks, there is the possibility that we take away 60 blue blocks from 40, making 20 anti-blocks, and you can't do that without ice flowers. Unfortunately, this isn't Mario Maker. Even if it was, we wouldn't have ice flowers. 
Nintendo, what the heck? All right, here's the next step. We found the maximum amount of brain combinations, and then we took out the ones that don't exist, but some of them really don't exist, so they're fine. But we never really had them in the first place. Anyways, now we're finding the combinations that take away 41 to 60 blocks of a single color, therefore violating the rule that we can't go over 169 blocks and the rule that we can't have more than 40 blocks of a single color. Let's start with taking away 60 blocks from a single color. There is one way to take away 60, but this 60 could be in 5 places, so we're going to keep it as one combination, but we will remember to multiply everything by 5 in the end. Make sure to remember this 5, or your answer to how many possible blocks of levels there are will be off by an entire Google. Go, 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 go. Anyways, let's make another chart and look at f of 2 or taking away 59 blocks. There are these four ways to do it and this way since it's still taking away 59 from a single color. We also have to add the first one since we want the total amount, not just the new ones. After a lot of numbers and counting, I found everything up until f of 7 and during that I found a nice trick. When finding new combinations, you'll notice that if we have 3 blocks to go around, we have these combinations, but with 4 blocks, the first combinations are just the ones with 3 blocks, but with an extra block on the top. Then we only have to find the combinations that have a 0 at the top and add them to the combinations from last time. Simple, right? Wrong! It was awful. Anyways, I got it to f of 7, and when we make new rows, we find something fishy. Instead of letting us get a constant like the last time, row 4 just doubles every time and so does row 5, and row 6. What the heck, math? We had a deal! Going down, nothing changes, so nothing will be constant. This is because, unlike the first table we made, this one doesn't follow a polynomial pattern, probably because we doubled the previous amount. So, I don't know what pattern it follows, so we're going to use BRUTE! FORCE! SWIFT! VIOLENT REVOLUTION! End quote Karl Marx. Believe it or not, carrying out row 4 for a while will get us all the values we need. Since we subtract value 2 from value 1 to get value 3, we can add values 2 and 3 to get value 1. Do this for seemingly forever, and BANG! 8,686,080. However, we have to go back to our pattern for pink and red, because those have combinations that result in anti-blocks as well. For taking away two pink or red blocks, we can just move over to taking away 43 blocks in the other pattern because that's how it works. We do this all the way until we get to taking away 59 blocks because we didn't have anything that took away 61 blocks in the original calculations, so we can just stop here. Let's just add all those numbers up and subtract them from 105,312,009 and we'll remember the five! We're not going to be off by a Google today. We get 46,305,319 and then we'll subtract that from 5,097,672,844, the original maximum number of combinations that may or may not have gone over 169 total blocks, in order to get 5,051,367,525 possible brains for any enemy in Bloxos. But hey, the most efficient solution is giving up. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching the video, I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to watch part 2 when it comes out, I hear it's real good. I've been talking to the scriptwriter about it, and let me tell ya, the man is hyped. In the meantime, watch my other videos, like this video, which doesn't have many views. It's so good though, like, like you should just go watch it now. Subscribe!